back to that comment you said spousal support is not forever because <laughs> sometimes I, I thought I read in some case law that they say that um, somebody is ordered to pay indefinite spousal support especially when you have a very long relationship and and you know so um but I'm just wondering like you know things happen right in 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 real life and sometimes perhaps you know the payor um falls ill or or they lose their job or whatever um so in where the circumstances change are you allowed to go back to court and ask to vary the amount that was ordered against you like are you allowed to do that yes so if you're receiving monthly spousal support and remember you can right. you can receive spousal support in one of two ways Okay. a monthly amount or a right. lump sum amount right. if you're receiving spousal support in a monthly amount there are usually terms and laura and i can talk about this there are usually terms in your agreement that identify what would allow you what are the factual scenarios that will allow you to go back to court or you know go back to mediation yeah. and renegotiate spousal support so yes there are terms specific terms we can walk you through do you want to give us a, a few examples just now, Laura? Sure. Maybe just a few examples of what would be, um, what, what, what have been some of the uh, change in circumstances uh, that have warranted a change in the spousal support agreement? And that's, and that's what, that's, that's a very good question because, um, and I'm, I'm going to go back to what Eva is mentioning. So if there is a, a spousal support agreement where, yes someone is paying monthly yes. that's when generally those review mechanisms or material change are called clauses come into play in the agreement um and that's when i believe a very very well written agreement is going to differentiate from a very poorly written agreement when certain terms are not certain terms are foreseeable Right. Today okay. we can we can anticipate we we can anticipate certain milestones that may trigger a change in someone's uh, financial circumstance, but right. they are not addressed nor specified in the agreement. So some of the terms can be uh, that's not necessarily you know written law, but mm -hmm. the most common terms that we see is if the recipient, for example, gets remarried. Right. Mm. So that would be, a, for example, that would be a term of review, not necessarily a term that you terminate spousal support, but you would review at that time the spousal support. Mm. Another term that we commonly see, mainly because there is an expectation if the recipient is, um, you know, it's, it is healthy, um, you know, um, um, a pretty decent age in terms of, you know, going back into the work field, there is an expectation of, of what's called self-sufficiency. So if there is, a, 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 you know, an instance where now the recipient is earning a particular income that is higher, mm -hmm. so, you know, the, the, we've had agreements where we say, uh, you know, the, the, the two of them have agreed that if the recipient is earning an income, if and when, uh, that is, I don't know, 30% higher than the current income, then it triggers a review. If it's 50% higher than the current, it triggers a termination of spousal support and so forth and so on. So there are instances where you can plug these in. And then there one, which is a very, very common one, and it could be very annoying actually for the payor, is when child support <laughs> stops. Yeah. <laughs> um then the spousal support may also be reviewed right because when child when a payor is paying two of child and a spousal support payments a month once right. him or her stops paying one then they relieve uh, you know essentially technically there's more funds now to redirect to to an increase perhaps uh in a spousal support so that's another term that could be included in there when child support stops then you can uh then the age the age of the payor is important as well we have terms of review such as when the payor either retires or yes. hits 65 yes so when when they when they uh when they uh, retire at 65 again it's a term of review not necessarily termination because there is an understanding that when someone retires technically they will not get or presumably they will not get the benefit of employment or self-employment right. income at that time so then their financial reality is going to uh it's going to look very different in order for them to continue a payment that was you know uh, agreed upon 10 years or 15 years prior okay so this triggered another question <laughs> in my in my brain because you're mentioning these um 
things that you have to consider in your agreement, in your clauses. Would, would the spouses work orders, would they also, like do judges usually also include all these possible scenarios in a spousal support order? I guess not, right? No. Yeah, so this is in, this is in a way why mediation is more powerful because it already um, takes these potential mm-hmm. situation account. Whereas if you go to court, basically you just you just kind of uh, trying to ask the judge, judge, please make the other person pay me this amount for this long or whatever it is, and and that's You're the right. order you get. Is that right? In negotiation or mediation, you can think about these scenarios that will yeah. happen to you in the future right. and plan right. for them. Whereas right. in court, what wow. you're doing is they say, well, wait till that happens and apply right. on the basis that there's been a material change. Yes. Oh, right. Okay. Um, and so you would say there's been a material change. The law says what you have to prove to show there's material change. Yeah. And if a judge thinks it's material enough, yes. then they will deal with it. So you're right that mediation or negotiation, you can think of those yeah. scenarios beforehand, so you don't have to worry about jumping through those extra hoops. Yeah, so you're anticipating this and you're actually going to save yourself a ton of money because if you filed for one of those motion to change, that's litigation. Yeah. And we all know how expensive <laughs> litigation is. Absolutely, so, yeah. A yeah. motion to change on spousal support is going to cost a couple thousand dollars easily. I would say at least. Um, people have uh, a, a very popular question that comes across is, um, okay, so you've explained the law on spousal support. Can people opt out? <laughs> so what I mean is um, people ask, can, can they have their own agreement, uh, say a domestic contract, prenup, whatever, right? A cohabitation agreement. Can they have agreement beforehand saying, um, well, we, we mutually agree that in the event of a breakup, we will have say X amount of spousal support or zero amount of spousal support. Like, are, are people allowed to do that? Yes. Okay. Uh, people are absolutely allowed to do that in a um, cohabitation agreement, or mm-hmm. if they get married, it's usually called a marriage contract. Right. Um, the only thing is mm-hmm. that um, when you should, obviously you have to get legal advice, okay? Right. okay. Sometimes a lawyer, will tell you or advise you not to waive spousal support because Mm -hmm. let's look at the example where someone has a disability. Oftentimes people marry at a young age, right? Right. In their late twenties or early thirties when they're healthy. Right. And then, you know, unfortunately they have an accident or they have a a disability during Mm -hmm. their marriage. Right. If then your spouse leaves you, yeah. And you signed a contract saying you shouldn't get spousal support, but you would otherwise be entitled. You're not going to be very happy right. with your lawyer or the contract that you signed years ago. Mm-hmm. So it's very common for people to get legal advice to say, don't, don't uh-huh. take it off the table. Right. It's really not in your best interest. Right. So if, all I would say is if some, someone's watching this video yes. is that if you're going to take it off the table, yes. then what you have to do is you have to start your relationship knowing yeah. that if the relationship ends, you're yeah. not going to get any spousal support. That means that you always have to have a job, right? Yeah. You always have to have a job and an income and skills so that if your spouse and you decide that you're going to separate, you have to be able to support yourself right away. That means that you should have disability insurance. You should have life Mm -hmm. insurance. There are a lot of things you have to put in place to ensure that that the breakup does not mean an economic disadvantage to you. Wow. Because that's what spousal support tries to avoid, right? But I guess like, um, I know this is really hard for young people, like people who right. are starting a relationship, not even young people, people just starting a relationship to contemplate what right. could happen. I mean, nobody wants to think, well, I might get an accident. But I think that like, it's interesting to think not just, well, am I entitled to spousal support, but do you also want to be on the hook for yeah. the other person? Like, are you okay with that? Like, so, you know, it's not you getting an accident. It's let's say in the future, you know, they, they were, you know, um, 
they cheat yeah. on you, right? They cheat on you, whatever, and you break up because they cheat on you and you really yeah. don't want to have anything to do with it again. And then they get an accident or whatever. They have, and a, they have a, to get support. Yeah. That's right. So right. they could they could I could be liable to be supporting them for for, for a long right. period of time, even though I don't really want to. So but then you know it's good that I suppose like another colleague of mine said, when you're when you're young or when you just start in your relationship and you still don't hate each other. <laughs> maybe that's a good time to sit down and talk about these things and about it. so yeah. that you can be fair on both sides like because it's yeah. better to talk about it I guess before the actual nasty thing happens about what is the right thing to do uh, rather than talk about this uh, in the heat of a of a dispute uh, when you're, and, when you're and not you're happy. absolutely right that a waiver of spousal support can be beneficial for for both people as well yeah. right because it takes it off the table what i'm just flagging is that yeah. if you just if you decide to waive it at the beginning of your relationship right. as a lawyer i always advise people yes. to say you're going to have to put some economic things in place to ensure That's that a good point. if you break up point. you're okay and yeah. especially if you are the lower income earner or a person who wants to um prioritize uh their career less right. Then their child rearing or family planning, you really have to think about it.